guys, it's uh, Mark Gibson from Tactical Edge here. So I'm just in uh, my gym, the best defence, waiting for my first kids' class to come in. And uh, I've been slapping the around a little bit, hence the, the sweat and the slightly heavy breathing. Um, so, really quick video for you guys, and what we're going to speak about today is um, a combination that I like. It's something I used to use um, quite a lot um, during the days I worked doors and stuff like that. I worked the doors for a little bit over 20 years, about 22 years. Um, so, what we're doing on this one is we are specifically attacking the carotid sinus. Okay? So, for those who don't know, carotid sinus, well, this muscle here is called your sternocleidomastoid. We are interested in the carotid artery that runs through there. Now, the carotid sinus, to put it really simply, is just a widening, a flaring of the carotid artery. And in the, uh, where the carotid sinus is, we have got the carotid sinus nerve. Now, it's a baroreceptor. So what it does is it tells your brain what your blood pressure is doing. So when we strike that area, it sends a signal to the brain saying your blood pressure is all messed up. Your brain waves a white flag, shouts uncle, and reticular activating system basically switches you off. Um, so at, uh, at least uh, the person will kind of turn green and feel and be really stunned and easy pickings. And at best, they'll drop like a sack of spuds. Now, just one caveat, whenever we do anything that renders somebody unconscious, remember the old saying, uh, sleep is the cousin of death. Whenever we render somebody unconscious, there is always a potential danger of very bad things happening. So keep that in mind. And that's why I always say your best defense is not to be there. I've seen more people injured and even killed because of ego, because they couldn't uh, wind their neck in, back down, um, and walk away than just about anything else. So, carotid sinus, we've got here and here, okay? Now, when we're striking the carotid sinus, we're not striking completely to the side, we're striking at about a 45 degree angle in. It doesn't take a great amount of power, um, a fairly moderate blow is what we're after. We don't want to hit the carotid sinus, the sinus like we're trying to break a brick, because we can destroy it, um, destroy the, you know, damage the nerve to the point where the heart stops. We'll also have some effect from vagal overstimulation. Okay, the vagus nerve is also traveling down there, and it doesn't particularly like being thumped either. So you've got a kind of a double whammy, and the phrenic nerve as well, if you want to be, if you want to think about that too. So, what are we doing with this? So, this works really well from a passive guard position where I'm gesticulating, I'm speaking with my hands, I'm done with the other guys. Oh, come on, come on, buddy. Now, at this point here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pressure forwards with my leg, okay, and I'm striking into the side of the neck with my knife hand. So that drop step is really important. So knees are slightly bent. I'm going to push off this leg. I want to get that nice hip snap into it. And it's kind of counterintuitive. A lot of people think the knife hand is twisting and striking this way. We're treating this like a straight blow, okay, and I'm just letting it hinge at the elbow. So, I'm going to take that little drop step in, and hit like so, okay? Now we double it up, so I'm going to hit one, now I'm going to count and twist, I'm going to do the same one, almost like a cross, but it snaps out at the end, so we get that 45 degree position. So here, little drop step in, hands up gesticulating, and we're ready to finish him off if need be, or control his descent. That's the thing to remember is, if I know he's smart, I notice I'm falling, I want to make sure this thing doesn't hit the ground, okay, because people die of concrete poisoning. So once more, little drop step forwards, hands up, just stick the lane, <laughs> strike, and then get ready to fall the top, okay? Now, as well as, as, well as being able to use it as a preemptive strike like that, what we can also do is we can use it um, in with other things, okay? So, if you imagine if I've just, um, Shielded up against the punch, he's throwing a haymaker at me and I bent it in, shielded, driven my elbow into there. This hand is already chambered, ready, bam, bam, so we put the strikes in there, okay? Um, off another combination, so I maybe hit, palm strike, hammer fits him on the we get the strikes in there as well. Um, if you think about functionalizing who but, so maybe I blocked, okay, I start with flinch. We've got the pass comes over. So I turned the third beat of the hoo into a strike. 
There's a million geeks in here with our conception. So we can walk, pass, get the strikes in. Okay. So there's a whole lot of different things that we can do with this, but it works really well from this kind of innocuous position here. But you've got to get the hip twist and the body movement, the knee spring, the snap, everything, so we're activating everything up through the body. Boom. Okay. So, hope that's a few statements, and we'll see you again sometime.